You will remember that when we studied together last, we looked at the names of the Lord. We discovered that there were many names of the Lord, but there is another. And each of those names of the Lord that we studied before revealed an aspect of his character. And we also noted that there was somebody else who was mentioned by name and whose name was changed because of his behaviour. Can you, anyone remember who that was? Go back further. Jacob. Given the name Jacob, but Jacob had a disagreement with the Lord and he wrestled with the Lord. And the Lord changed his name to Israel, he who wrestles with God. And the Israelites are still with us today. And this was the thing that interested me. Uh, how long ago was that? The Israelites are here, they're still here. There's big, big, big trouble going on at the moment with this nation and the nations that surround it. And do, do be listening and do be praying because it's very important. So, Jacob struggles with the Lord and his name is changed to Israel. So our subject today is a name for the Lord which is not used elsewhere. <clears throat> this is in the book of the prophet Isaiah and this name for the Lord is mentioned 26 times and the name is he is the Lord Almighty, the Holy One of Israel. Specific, 26 times. The Lord is particularly connected with this nation. He is the Holy One, the Special One, the Holy One of Israel. A few words first of all about the prophet Isaiah. Um, I try and be brief on this, but I was utterly amazed to realize how long ago the prophecy of Isaiah was actually written. It's mind-blowing. Isaiah's name means the Lord saves. Interesting. And his ministry began round about 740 years before the Messiah. some three millennia before our time. And he received his commission and anointing from the Lord, Isaiah chapter 6, in the year that King Uzziah died, 742 years before the common era. And on that occasion, Isaiah saw the glory of the Lord. It's the last verse of that chapter that I need to bring before you now. The Lord Almighty made a promise to Isaiah concerning his people. That last verse, and it goes like this. As the terebinth and the oak leave stumps when they are cut down, so the holy seed will be the stump in the ground. So the tree is going to be cut down, almost to ground level, but there's going to be a stump left. Does that remind you of anything that's been going on in the UK in recent days? Mm. What does it remind you of? sycamore gap yeah and the tree was cut down for no good reason and the stump was left in the ground what's the latest news it's growing again wow 
Well, that's not the first time it's happened because it's happened to the people of Israel. But wow, I mean, what, you know, suddenly I thought, goodness me, it's just like that for Israel. So after centuries of the Lord's discipline imposed on this rebellious nation, because they are, they were, and they probably will continue to be for some time yet. After centuries of discipline up to now, there would come a time when like that sycamore tree, a new nation will grow. Now think back into history. Twice the Israelites have been exiled from their land. Disciplinary measures. The first was um, when the Lord gave the, them over to Nebuchadnezzar and the temple was destroyed and they were in Babylon for 70 years. And then they were brought back and the land was restored. That was the first one. The second one, the major one, was at the time of Rome. When the Messiah was, re was rejected and the Romans destroyed the temple and the Israelites were scattered worldwide. Agreed? What's happening now? What's happening now? They're coming back from everywhere, from all over the globe. They are coming back to the land. Now, I see the Lord in this. Why do I see the Lord in this? Because of the word of the Lord. And at that point, I would like to break off from my text and I would like to read to you, and you can turn to it yourself if you like, what Isaiah chapter 43 says. Verses 1 to 13, and this is how it goes. But now, this is what the Lord says, He who created you, Jacob, He who formed you, Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you, I have summoned you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you walk through the fire, sorry, when you pass through the rivers, you will not be swept away. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned and the flames will not set you ablaze. Think back into biblical history and you will find three references to those three things. I'll leave you to do that. Why? For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Saviour. The Lord himself is speaking about this troubled and troublesome nation. I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Saviour. I give Egypt for your ransom, Cush and Seba for your stead. Verse 4, why? Since you are, note this, precious and honoured in my sight and because I love you, I will give people in exchange for your life, nations in exchange for your life. Do not be afraid for I am with you. I will bring your children from the east and I will gather you from the west. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not hold them back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth, everyone who is called by my name, Israel, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. Lead out those who are blind, who are, who are, sorry, who have eyes but are blind and ears but are deaf. All the nations gather together and the peoples assemble, which of their gods foretold this and proclaimed to us the former things. Let them bring their witnesses to prove that they were right, so that others may hear and say, it is true. 
And then the Lord speaks again. You are my witnesses, declares the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, so that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me, no God was formed, nor will there be one after me. I, even I, am the Lord, and apart from me there is no saviour. I have revealed and saved and proclaimed not some foreign god among you. You are my witnesses, declares the Lord, that I am God. Yes, and from ancient days I am he. No one can deliver out of my hand, and when I act, who can reverse it? Wow. It's, it, you know, the more you think about that passage of scripture, the more amazing it becomes. Now, how much I'm going to be able to share with you, I don't know, but we'll see. First thing you have to note is that Lord himself gave Jacob the name Israel. It was no mistake. And Israel was the one who struggled with God and prevailed. Interesting. So let's look page 728 in your Bibles, at what the passage actually says. If you'd like to take a moment and turn to that, it might help you. So, verse 1. Jacob, otherwise known as Israel, what does the verse tell us about him? He was chosen. He was also... He was... Created. He was created, yes, he was created. The Lord created him. Perhaps this is a total renewal of character and disposition or what have you. But the Lord created him. What else? The Lord formed him. Do you know this, what does this make you think of? Created, formed. Where do these things come up? I suggest they come up in the book of Genesis, when the Lord created man, formed him, and then eventually, way down the line, he redeemed. He bought with a price. We were bought with a price. We were redeemed. Jacob also. Jacob was summoned by name by the Lord. There's no mistake about it. It didn't happen by accident. It was not a mistake. Israel is an elect people. And in scripture, the act of naming something or someone establishes sovereignty over the person so named. And the Lord says, you are mine. So the Lord has accepted responsibility for Israel. Okay? Have a look at verse 2. What do you think this is all about? What references do you pick up here? Sorry? Fear not for I have redeemed you. Fear not for I have redeemed you, yes. We, we, we've looked at that one and that is so important. But in this, this verse two, there are various biblical... When you've got trouble. When you've got trouble, yes. Well, name the troubles. Name at least one trouble. Well, to get out of Egypt, they had to get across the Red Sea. That was a problem. And then they had to negotiate the Sinai Desert. That was another problem. 
Eventually, before they came into the land, they had to get across the River Jordan. So you've got some connections there. Later on, when under discipline, they were marched off to Babylon, something interesting happened there where the Lord intervened. Fire. What was the episode? Do anyone remember the episode of fire when they were in Babylon? There were three Jewish people who were They were thrown into the flaming fire of the furnace. And what happened to them? They didn't get burned. And who came and stood with them? Because a fourth person appeared in that fiery furnace. And Nebuchadnezzar took several steps backwards. So, you know, this is episodes from Israel's history. And what's the message for us of this? Whatever we may go through in, what, in times of trouble and difficulty and hardship and fear, what's the message? He is with us. Is that so, Dozy? That is. That is so. <laughs> Verses three and four. I'm interested in this. The Lord identifies himself to his people. He is, who? What does he say? He is, I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel. I am, this is his choice, and he refers to himself as the Lord your God. Israel, sit up and pay attention. I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel. And this name, the Holy One of Israel, comes up, as I've said before, so many times in this prophecy. He will do whatever is necessary to bring his people home. Verses 3 and 4 gives the reason. What's the reason? Why will he do this? Because he says to Israel, you are precious and honoured in my sight and because I love you, <coughs> says the Lord. Present tense. Doesn't seem to have changed because they're still around. <laughs> and I read in some notes there that love is not just affection but there's possibly some kind of a covenant arrangement there. Not that we've got time to go into that. What does he say in verse 4 particularly? They are precious, they are honoured, and they are loved. And one of the book, the Bibles I study said it was most unusual that this clarity and tenderness should be expressed like that. They are precious, they are honoured, and they are loved. Something that perhaps we should be aware of ourselves. What about verses five and six? What's the promise there? What's he going to do about it? They're going to be regathered. It's happened before. He who scattered Israel, writes the prophet Jeremiah, the Lord through Jeremiah says, he who scattered them will regather them. And in Jeremiah it says, hear the word of the Lord, O nations, proclaim it in the distant coastlands. He who scattered Israel will gather them and watch over his flock like a shepherd. Jeremiah 31 verse 10. So, the Israelites will be regathered, where from? East and west and north and south. Has something occurred to you as I say that? It's happening again today. It's happening today. 
in our lifetime, the Israelis are returning from all the places where they have been scattered for the best part of 2,000 years. There are probably physical consequences, like for instance World War II, the creation of the State of Israel in 1948, and in our day, the appalling rise in anti-Semitism. But they're even, whatever it takes, he will have them back in his land. I struggled very much with verses eight and nine. Um, I came to the conclusion in the end that the, this is some kind of a court scene and the nations, or peoples, plural, assemble to bear witness to the fact that no foreign gods or idols have predicted what the Lord will do. Israel's very existence bears witness to the fact that he and he alone has done it. Verse 10 is not easy. Israel has had a long history of worshipping other gods. And it's highly likely that there are Israelites today who are still up to the same thing. But the very existence of the nation of Israel today bears witness to the work of the Lord on their behalf throughout history. And remember how far that history goes back. Because we talk about prophet Isaiah and the king, King Uzziah, in whose lifetime he lived. The Lord, he is the Holy One of Israel. His work on behalf of Israel is proof of who he is the Lord Almighty, the only true God. Verses 11 to 13. We've talked about that. I'd like to refer you now to a verse from Isaiah chapter 41, two verses actually, verses 8 and 9. Turn over the page. Here, the Lord speaks, and this is what he says. But you, Israel, my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, you descendants of Abraham, and it goes right back, my friend, I took you from the ends of the earth, from its furthest corners I called you, I said, you are my servant. I have chosen you and I have not rejected you. The regathering of the people and the existence today of the state of Israel is a testimony to the faithful love and sovereign power of the Holy One of Israel and to the reliability of the word of the Lord given by the prophet Isaiah three millennia ago. It's, it's, it's mind-blowing. I was, I was amazed when I actually started digging around to find the dates for all of this. As believers in the Jewish Messiah, what is our situation at the moment? Well, let me tell you, the apostle whom we call Paul, thereby managing not to point out the fact that he's Jewish, Saul of Tarsus actually was his name, as believers in the Jewish Messiah, we have been grafted into Israel's olive tree. We, as believers in Yeshua, have been grafted into Israel's olive tree. We Gentiles share in the same love, discipline, provision, and protection. We, together with Israel, are witnesses to the mercy, the love, and the power of the Holy One of Israel. 
I would like to quote something from the Apostle Paul, which he wrote to the church in Rome. And this is what he says. I do not want you to be ignorant of this mystery, brothers and sisters, so that you may not be conceited. Big Gentile congregation in Rome. Israel has experienced a hardening in part. Israel is still pretty hard to the gospel, you know. There are messianic fellowships springing up across the land, but there's still a hardness there. Israel has experienced a hardening in part until the full number of Gentiles, folks like you and me, folks who are on the receiving end of the work that Dozie is doing, until the full number of Gentiles has come in. And in that way, this way, all Israel will be saved. As it is written, the deliverer will come from Zion and he will turn away godlessness from Jacob. And this is my covenant with them when I take away their sins. Thank you for listening.